Hey Joe. Well here you go man. Here's all them daylilies, or what I think are daylilies. I'm still unsure. I'm almost 100% sure, but I'm going to follow these through the season and watch them grow and get the stem and the flower. That way I'll become familiar with this plant and I'll know it from spring to fall. I gave you some pics of the little tubers. And the leaves. But uh, that wasn't directed at you, Joe, but I figured I'd just show them real quick. There they are. Probably a good half acre's worth that was piled up here from who knows where. And all those tubers are really easy to access, but I'm not going to risk it. I'll wait and I'll watch the plant grow and then I'll know for sure. A lot of the plants I show and, you know, a lot of the plants other people show on YouTube and stuff, they're perfectly edible, but just like domestic plants, if you have a food allergy or if you're on a certain medication or something, you should always uh, check with your doctor or something and make sure that it's not going to cause a reaction. Some of these plants can increase the effects of medicine. And the same is true with domestic plants. If you break a bone, you're not supposed to eat spinach because spinach has something in it that blocks your body's ability to absorb calcium and it can delay the healing of the bone. That's something I didn't know until I started researching wild edibles. And I do a lot of videos on wild edibles, but I noticed I have a maybe a little bit different approach to it than a lot of other wild edible uh, gurus or whatever. I don't consider myself a guru by any means, but you know, a lot of people when they talk about wild edibles, they they only want to tell you the positive and uh, you know, in some cases they stretch the truth just to try and get you to eat a plant because they want to spread the word or whatever and uh, that's not me. I'm not about sugarcoating anything. I guess my wild edible approach is more militant than anything. Maybe not. That's how I view it. Maybe I look like some guy frolicking through the woods, but that's not who I am. I'm uh, I might I guess I'm a wannabe hippie, but uh when it comes down to it, I'm uh, uh probably more of a survivalist than anything. That's the approach I like, you know. I don't like sugarcoating stuff. I like getting straight to the facts and, uh, you know, not beating around the bush and telling you some big fairy tale story. If I like a plant, I'll tell you. If I don't, I'll tell you. And garlic mustard is a good example. I don't really like it, but I do eat it when I'm out because it's nice to have something to munch on. And if we all did go out and pick all this garlic mustard out of the woods and eat it or just get rid of it, burn it, then uh, a lot of our other good wild edibles would be able to grow. But to be honest with you, this garlic mustard is so invasive. Unless you got a, a group of about 10 people managing one small wood lot. Uh, it's going to be awful hard to control, but that doesn't mean you can't control it. I have a couple small spots that I do control because they have spring beauties and trout lilies, and I want to keep those there because I don't find a lot of them elsewhere. But as far as the garlic mustard everywhere else, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a one-man army. I can't stop the garlic mustard from spreading throughout the whole world. This is honeysuckle. As a kid, this stuff grew in Kentucky and it smelled really good and I always remembered it being a vine but it's actually a shrub and from what I understand people use this to make arrow shafts I don't know if it's edible but uh, I just identified this plant uh, this spring as a matter of fact and uh, it grows everywhere it's super abundant so if you like making arrows that might be a plant to to know
I haven't ventured there yet. Maybe I will one day. But if you see my Mad Dog video, the point I was going to make about this is uh, one guy mentioned that Mad Capped Horse is a better a better term to use because it includes the Caprio Folio Say family of plants as well, along with horse chestnut, and they all have opposite leaf and branch arrangement. Well, I found out that the Caprio Folio Say family of plants is the honeysuckle family of plants. So there's another shrub with opposite branching. And you can see it right here. You gotta look close because sometimes it'll trick you, you know, like right here. It looks alternate. But it's just because one side broke off. Same thing happened here, one side broke off. But if you come up just a bit further, you can see that it's actually opposite arrangement. The younger sapling ash. You can see the opposite branching and compound leaves. What a compound leaf is, is this right here. This is one leaf. Now it looks like it has two, four, six, seven leaves on it, but it's actually one leaf and those are considered leaflets. Now all I have to do is take this home and look in my field guide and see which ash, which ash has uh, seven leaflets. If that, if that is even a help, I'm not sure. But it's, a, it's one of the identifying features. And those are the things you look for when you're trying to identify plants. What type of leaf does it have? What type of leaf and stem arrangement does it have? And what type of flower does it have? Every little detail. What does the bark look like? It's got little white spots on it. All you have to do is take some pictures of the plant. Take all kinds of pictures. You got a digital camera. This camera has a two gig card in it and I think I can take a thousand pictures. There's no way I'm gonna take a thousand pictures even as picture crazy as I am. Take a bunch of detailed pictures of those plants, the leaves, the stems, the bark, the flower. That way you can go home and at your leisure you can browse the internet looking at images. You can look through field guides and identify, identification guides and identify this stuff. You know, I've had quite a few people ask me, how did you learn so much about plants? Well, first off, I don't think I know a whole lot about plants. I do know quite a bit, but I didn't learn it by uh, getting the stuff downloaded into my head like they did in the movie The Matrix. I learned it by getting out and taking pictures and going back and searching the internet and going through books. And also I learned it by uh, talking with other people that forage that are more experienced than me. A lot of the tips I give you, like with the ash, the upward pointing branches, the uh, diamond plate bark, and uh, the, the blooming lilacs for the morels, the, the oak leaves the size of a mouse's ear. That isn't stuff I just figured out, that's stuff that was passed down to me or shared with me by another forager. It takes time to learn this stuff. The best tip and bit of advice I ever got was from a guy who told me to pick one plant and learn that one plant. Don't get overwhelmed with all the thousands of plants in the world. Just pick one and learn to identify that one plant. And once you identify that plant, you'll have likely ran into 10 other plants that look similar. And uh, by the time you're identifying that one plant, you'll likely be familiar with 10 different plants. And in one year, if you identify 10 plants that way, you'll be familiar with 100. 
I've been doing this for I think six years now so you know I'm probably familiar with I don't know a few hundred plants and a few hundred mushrooms but that's just touching the tip of the iceberg there's a lot more plants out here that I don't know anything about going along with that same logic one thing I noticed is uh, for years and even still today I'll find a plant and I'll identify it and I'll be like I know that plant but I won't eat it or I won't watch it progress through the season and then when the day comes that I want to eat it I look at the plant and I'm like you know what I think I know that plant but now that I'm considering eating it I'm not so sure I do same with just like with those daylilies I know daylilies like I know daylilies like the back of my hand but to eat the small shoots in the spring or the tubers I am still unfamiliar with them so I'm not gonna go and eat those daylilies even though I'm almost a hundred percent sure that's what they are I'll watch them grow this season and when this season is over with I'll know 100 percent without a doubt that that is the daylily I'll know it in the spring the summer the fall and if possible even in the winter that way when I get in a situation and I need that plant or when I decide I want to eat that plant I'll be confident and I'll be familiar enough with it that if it's edible at any time of year I'll be confident enough to eat it at any time of year no matter what stage of growth it's in I think that's gonna do it for this video it's humid it's only in the 60s but man it's humid and uh, I was kinda hoping that heat up and cool down would kill those mosquitoes off but it heated up and got humid again and they're out in full force I think all, all it did is make them even more bloodthirsty because they're in those woods big time thanks for watching thanks for all the comments and thanks for the support talk to you guys later